You have to go to him, to face him. And when you do, you'll learn the truth. Originally released as a Japan-only game for the DS, Nino Kuni's North America release has been a long time coming. This PS3 exclusive version, titled Wrath of the White Witch, is a throwback to the classic Japanese RPGs of yore, but it puts a new spin on the formula by mixing elements of Dragon Quest, the Tales series, and Nintendo's own Pokemon franchise. When it comes down to it, is there more to Nino Kuni than just pretty visuals and nostalgia? I know, I know, I know, but... But what precisely? Hey, speaking of dreams, I've always had a bit of a dream myself, you know. Oh, nice. Nice link, man. Nino Kuni starts off as a tearjerker about a young boy named Oliver who's struggling to cope with the death of his mother. While mourning, he inadvertently brings to life one of his dolls, a magical being from another world called Drippy. This creature attempts to console Oliver by offering him a glimmer of hope. According to Drippy, there exists a soulmate in his native realm for every person in Oliver's world. So this is... your world. Ah, home at last! But there's a tidy way to go yet! If Oliver could somehow save his mother's counterpart, then he may be able to bring her back to life. The two journey to this other world, where they eventually team up with new friends in a quest to stop an evil mage named Shadar, who also happens to hold the key to saving Oliver's mom. Looks to me like a classic case of brokenheartedness. Brokenheartedness? The reoccurring theme in Nino Kuni is mending broken hearts, none more important than Oliver's. The writing is top notch, replete with wit and tenderness, and there's a great payoff to every story element, especially Oliver's story. I'll bring down Shadar. You'll see. You really feel for the young man, and you genuinely want to help him succeed in his quest. Selling weapons. Exactly. Right o. Though Nino Kuni has a slow start, it eases you into its complex mechanics and takes the time to teach you the ropes. Eventually, you'll turn loose to explore the world, an especially appealing prospect once you gain the ability to fly around on a dragon and progress at your own pace. But in the early goings, it's fairly linear as you're strung along from one location to the next as dictated by the story. Where you get to deviate from this predictability is by undertaking the numerous side quests thrown your way. Sorry sir, we got a little sidetracked. These diverse attractions provide a deeper insight into Nino Kuni's world, while granting you more tangible rewards, like loot and cash. You'll also fill out merit cards in the process, which grant you exceptional bonuses when completed, like the ability to manually jump or an increased experience rate in battle. Nino! Nino Kuni also takes a page from the Pokemon formula with its familiar system. Throughout the game, you can catch enemies and convert them into allies. They come in all different forms, and creating a balanced team is crucial to your success. Simply trying to plow your way through the game won't work. Part of the challenge is in amassing a large inventory of familiars and evolving them into formidable allies. Okay, let's try some. Perhaps the most unique aspect of Nino Kuni is the Wizard's Companion, an in-game book you have to consult frequently in order to solve puzzles or learn about enemies. It serves as a great way to immerse you in the world, and you'll find yourself wishing you had a physical copy on hand in order to do so. Unfortunately, unless you pony up for the limited edition, you'll have to make do with the in-game version. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I wished that... it's okay. Aside from the slow start, the biggest sticking point may be the game's brutal difficulty. Even playing on the easiest setting will give you a challenge, as the game's difficulty spikes every time you reach a new region. Though it's easily manageable at first, the difficulty ramps up significantly about two-thirds of the way through. Make no mistake, for all its childlike wonder, Inokuni puts up a real fight. This is your doing, is it not? Then you must be rewarded. Nino Kuni's battle system feels like a hybrid of something from the more recent Tales games and the Pokemon series. Basically, you go into any battle with up to three party members, each of which can have up to three different familiars to call upon. That's right! The fighting spirit inside you made flesh! A soldier of you a soul! While you can freely toggle between active members, you can also set the tactics for your partner when controlled by AI. The computer is competent, so there's no need to worry about them tripping you up. The battle system appears overly simple at first, but it's got some significant nuances that are immensely satisfying. Combat revolves around discerning enemy movements and behaviors and exploiting openings in their patterns. The best examples of this are interrupting enemies as they're casting spells or blocking their incoming attacks. 
the game does a great job of informing you to these nuances, health and mana orbs drop from enemies, as a reward indicating you've performed the correct action. By continuously taking advantage of this, you'll eventually trigger the appearance of a golden orb that powers up your character's ultimate ability. The stamina system plays an important role in battles. Each familiar runs on a stamina meter when active on the battlefield, and you have to switch between them to give them time to recharge. This adds more tension when in combat, but it's never frustrating, as you're always given a fair warning to avoid a mishap. All of these moving bits impart quite a bit of tactical depth. The battle system rewards patient, methodical play, while also punishing you for trying to abuse the same tactics. Nito! Here we are, Al Mamoun, beautiful. Mm -hmm. There are precious few games that look as good as Nino Kuni. It's simply astounding how faithfully the game recreates Studio Ghibli's trademark style through the in game visuals. And you want to drag Pretty Boy here into it too? We sure do. There are so many small touches that further elevate the game, like how miserable Oliver looks when he's shivering in the snow wearing normal clothes. The top notch animation really helps sell you on the character's humanity. As for the soundtrack, there are a few tunes like the battle theme that get repetitive, so there are times when it could have used some more variety. However, this is a very powerful soundtrack overall, where the tone of most songs perfectly suits what you're experiencing. A lot of love and care went into this game, and it shows. Hmm, what the devil was one up to? You know, man. Ah! That voice. What's most surprising about Nino Kuni is how it manages to feel refreshing while still faithfully hearkening back to the classics. The payoffs are immense for those who tough out its more challenging portions, though its world is so striking and rewarding to explore that you shouldn't have any trouble mustering the motivation. If you have any sort of appreciation for a great RPG, look no further than Nino Kuni. Three, two, one, blast off! See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.